Hey folks, my lovely colleague Nikki gifted me this awesome little piece of tech, a Cypeed GPNV Nano KVM. It's a small RISC-V IP-based KVM unit that allows me to gain most of the functionality that a dedicated lights-out management controller would grant me. In this video, I'll show three examples of how it'll assist me in my home lab endeavor. The first project is simple. Update the BIOS of the motherboard in my VM host. Next, I'll tackle upgrading the VM host software itself, and lastly, I'll use the KVM to clone a disk. First step of this endeavor is to flash the KVM with its OS. This OS can be downloaded directly from SciPeed's homepage. I've included all of the relevant links in the video description. Installing the Nano KVM to my equipment is very easy to do, but there's a bit of configuration that needs doing beforehand. Download the relevant ISO from SciPeed's homepage, then open your favorite flashing utility of choice. I tend to swap between Rufus and Belina Etcher and write the ISO to the SD card. I assume that you've dealt with a Raspberry Pi before, so this procedure should come second nature to you. While this assumption cannot be rectified with the data that I have at hand, I'd say that if the statistics I get from YouTube about my audience is anywhere near as correct as they are detailed, the data will strongly suggest your ability to do so. When you've waited for the ISO to be written to the flash media, just insert the SD card into the Nano KVM itself and make sure it's seated all the way to the bottom. Then chug it to the machine of destination. Here you'll need three cables. A display cable provides the obvious, a display signal which is received by the Nano KVM pretending to be a monitor. Then you'll need a USB cable which is responsible both of powering the small machinery, but since the KVM also pretends to be both a mouse, a keyboard and a CD drive, the USB will provide a connection to your newly acquired fake peripherals. Good work. Lastly you'll need a network cable so you have a way of reaching the party remotely. At this point we are ready to start the first task at hand, update the BIOS of one of my VM hosts. Without the KVM, I'd have to be standing right next to the machine, since I cannot manage the BIOS remotely. I'll start by googling the motherboard model number, usually picking the first link in the search engine, and then navigating towards the downloads and picking the newest BIOS available. I put the BIOS on yet another flash drive. I don't know if the Nano KVM can pretend to be a USB stick itself, and then I'll just next 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 through the installation. My current BIOS version is F2 all the way back from 2021, and I'm upgrading all the way forward to F30 from just a few months ago. This is a huge gap which should give me additional performance and additional compatibility should the need arise in the future. Updating BIOSes is one of those tasks that I tend to forget on systems that I don't either sit right, right in front through, of sir. every day like or cannot today. manage with a light out management chip. So already now I'm gaining huge value from the Nano KVM. Sure, I could walk a keyboard, mouse and monitor out here, but I don't really want to do that when I can get my hands on more niche hardware and have an excuse to talk about it on the internet. Many issues could be solved with better discipline, and here I am tackling them with better signaling. Once the BIOS was done upgrading, the VM host instantly booted into its own operating system, which is not really what I wanted to do, so I powered it off once again and entered the newly upgraded BIOS to see the changes it has made and made some of my own. My version of the KVM don't have access to the on-off reset buttons of the physical machine, so I'm doing it from the virtual monitor of the Nano KVM. When that is done, I want to tackle upgrade number two, upgrading the host OS of the VM host itself. So yet again, I'm flashing another drive, this time with a new version of ESXi that I'm using, where I've injected the net community drivers to allow me access to the onboard NIC, which is on a real tech chip that on the stock version of ESXi don't really play well with the operating system. Beforehand, I got around this issue by using two add-in Intel NICs. One two-port card gave me a bonded LACP connection to my SAN array, while the other single-port card gave me network connectivity for the virtual machines and management of the VM host itself. By using the onboard real technique, I can now move management away from the virtual machine interface, which should free up a few percent better performance. 
and I get more blinking lights, which admittedly is 90% of the reason for this upgrade. That's just the community drivers part of this upgrade of course, the rest of the software is just a general upgrade to the ESXi software itself. The upgrade itself couldn't be more simple. Just put in the installation media, choose the upgrade as you saw me do before and wait for the installation manager to do the rest of the work. Once that is finished you can then navigate to the web page of the VM host itself, log in, I'm just using root because I'm just a single user, and here you can see I'm having some connectivity issues to my data stores which was fixed by re-enabling some of the NICs. I'll then remove the installation media because I don't need it anymore. At this point we're ready to tackle the last of the three tasks at the end today, clone a drive. Here is an M.2 SSD and here's an M.2 SSD carrier board. I'll be cloning the boot drive onto this drive because I have one specific gripe. Look I know I'm the only one who ever gets to look inside of this machine, but the one pigtail with four SATA power connectors just really really bothers me and I'm afraid to admit this, but it keeps me up at night. So I'm going to move the SATA SSD out of the machine entirely to free it up for another project I might have in the future, and then I'll clone the installation over to this internal M.2 SSD. This makes me use even more of my PCIe bandwidth, which is just plain cool. But before we can do any of that, let's boot up the machine, and then we need to make yet another clone to one of the USB drives. I'm using Clonezilla here. Everything Clonezilla does could be done in just regular old Linux, but I like to have a text GUI of sorts to click through. It helps me keep myself sane. I really want to utilize the virtual CD drive functionality of the Nano KVM itself. It would be easier if you could upload the virtual CDs directly from the browser, but at least there is a handy pop-up that directs us to an SCP server running on the Nano KVM itself. I'll target that with WinSCP and upload the Clonezilla ISO to it. Uploading the ISO itself took way longer time than I had imagined. In this case it would probably have been easier to just flash the ISO to another USB stick like before and then mounting that physically, but I want to toy with my toys, not necessarily use the most efficient path to my end goal. Since there's already a present installation of accessible boot media, I need to go into the BIOS and change boot options to the virtual CD drive that I've mounted Clonezilla to. Clonezilla itself is a great tool to have in your tool belt, which will enhance the Linux noob like me's ability to clone disks to either other disks, partitions or images. Sure, you could do this with DD from any Linux machine, but this method is easy and it's one that I know how to do and have done a lot of times before. Specifically in this use case, I'll be using the device to device functionality to engrab the entire existing SATA SSD and cloning it to the newly inserted NVMe model. Pick the source drive from the pop-up and likewise with the destination drive. Since the SATA SSD reports as 256GB and the NVMe only as 250, I have to use the advanced option to skip checking the destination size. This would be a problem if the source drive was filled to the brim and the destination drive significantly smaller, but this is only a boot volume and only the first 40 or so gigabytes should be used. I'll also enable the option to play a cute sound when done, hoping for it to use the motherboard speaker, but I had no luck on that front. From this point on the entire process should be fully automated by Clonezilla, and while it can take some time to be finished, it should do so without any problems. I'd also like to note that I do acknowledge there is quite some visual glitches on the screen right now. This is an anomaly caused by the Nano KVM and not Clonezilla itself. I'm also not having any issues with the graphics card when plugging in a real monitor quote unquote, I don't have this issue at all. After Clonezilla is done, the machine can power off and as you can see, it'll do so in the real world as well. This allows me to unplug the SATA data cable from one end of the motherboard, of course do the same on the drive and do SATA power as well. And finally I can get rid of that pesky power cable that I've been talking about before. I don't really need the graphics card either at this point, so I'll take this out as well and redo the two PCIe brackets that are now empty. Hmm, very nice indeed. I'll then undo the SATA disk itself using the cute little hidden mount that I've talked about in this Sleeker case review from before. 
It's almost a shame to undo the drive, but like I said, I don't like the pigtail and at least now I'm not kept awake by ugly ugly internal drives from this one random machine in my rack. I can now lastly power on the machine one more time and make sure everything is correct. Look at the beautiful RAM. As you can see on the KVM itself, everything should be waking up and in just a second ESXi should be loading, loading as so. I'll then go ahead and check that ESXi boots from the new NVMe drive as it should be since I've removed the original SATA SSD. Now that that has been rectified, I need to go to the management pane of the VM host itself and take the VM host out of maintenance mode and then restart all of the shutdown VMs. Restarting all of the VMs at the same time results in a bootstorm which severely hinders my CPU performance, but I think that is a task for another day, perhaps another video as well. For now, I'll just like to say thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, um, then, then that's good for you, I guess. Have a good day. Cheers.